Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be making parmesan. Well, Parmigiano, or better known as Parmigiano Reggiano, is from the Lombardy area in Italy. And it is a very well-known cheese, well-known all the way, all, the, all around the world um, for its pecan flavor. And it is just amazing when shaved and when grated. Um, it is a common ingredient in a lot of pasta dishes sprinkled over the top um, or in other dishes as well. Uh, essential ingredient in uh, basil pesto as well. A delicious cheese, so let's see how we make it, shall we? So initially I had an issue trying to get 2% uh, fat milk. So what I had to do was use a combination of milk. So this is a 1.3% uh, fat milk, it's a light milk. So I used 10 litres of that and I also used four liters of full cream milk which is about 3.3 percent so that gave me a grand total of 14 liters of milk and which is 14 quarts at two percent fat i used three eighths of a teaspoon of thermophilic culture an eighth of a teaspoon of lipase three quarters of a teaspoon of calcium chloride three quarters of a teaspoon of liquid rennet and I was using IMCU 200 rennet and 18% saturated brine solution. So once the pot is full, we're going to bring that up to heat now. And the target temperature is 33 degrees Celsius or 91.4 Fahrenheit. So I'm just making sure that's evenly heated all the way through before I go to the next step. So I'm going to be adding the thermophilic culture. So I used three eighths of a teaspoon. So I'm using an eighth of a teaspoon there, just sprinkling it over the top of the 2% the fat milk. Now Parmesan is very special in that you do use a lower fat percentage of milk to get the uh, the flavor that you're after after a very long period of time for uh, ripening. Now uh, we just let this uh, starter culture sit on the top for about five minutes, just allowing it to rehydrate. Pop the lid on so no dust or hair gets into your cheese. And then five minutes later, give that a good stir. Um, top and bottom just making sure that there's nothing in there and giving a good mix all the way through so the starter culture can start converting the lactose in the milk into lactic acid pop the lid back on and we're going to ripen the milk now for 45 minutes So 45 minutes later, we're going to start to add one of the essential ingredients to making Parmesan a piquant flavour. Uh, just check the temperature first. Yes, we're at uh, close enough to 33 degrees Celsius, which was 91.4 Fahrenheit. Make sure you check your temperatures regularly. Now we're going to add the lipase. Lipase is a pre-gastric enzyme that uh, creates the piquant flavor in parmesan if you're not using raw milk now because i'm using pasteurized and homogenized i've had to add in lipase to this recipe okay i gave that a good stir through now we're going to cover again and let that ripen again for 15 minutes Okay, 15 minutes later, and we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients now. Before I do, I'm going to give it a quick stir. Soon. Oh, there we go. 
So make sure the milk is moving and then we're going to add in the diluted calcium chloride that was diluted with a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. The reason we're using non-chlorinated water is because it does inhibit the renneting action uh, when we add the rennet in in the next step. So just a non-chlorinated water that can be filtered water or pure water. Um, just make sure it doesn't have any chlorine in it. We're adding the rennet now. That's diluted rennet as well. And we give it a stir for no more than one minute. The uh, reason we don't over stir this is because the rennet is actually starting to work right now. And we don't want to break up the protein structure of the milk. Now one additional step, you can see that the milk is moving a little bit too fast here. So I'm going to slow that down and try and stop it before we put the lid on and allow it to set. There we go, I've stopped most of the movement. This helps the rennet set a lot better as well. Okay, then we cover and we're going to allow the milk to coagulate now into its component curds and ways for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes later, we're going to check for a clean break. And we can do that with our pinky. Now have a look at the break there. It's a little bit sloppy. It's not as um, defined as it should be. It didn't have a clear line down the middle. So what we're going to do there is we're going to allow it to uh, coagulate a little bit more for another 10 minutes. So the, I normally do this if I find that the break is a bit sloppy. Okay, so 10 minutes later, we're just going to check it again. Now that's splitting very well now. Um, just a little bit shouldn't be on there but that split a lot better than what it did the first time so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut the curds now parmesan's a funny beast uh, the curd size needs to be very small to start with so we're going to cut it into lentil size pieces now I found that the best way to do that is to use a balloon whisk and simply um, lift it up and down as you can see there and we're basically cutting the curds quite small to start with. So you've got to go around many, many times to make sure that it is cut correctly and there's no large pieces. You don't want any uneven pieces of curd for this recipe because they will hold more weigh than what the smaller pieces do and that will affect the final texture of your parmesan. Now I've left the entire process in for this video because I think it's very important for you to see that I am actually cutting larger pieces of curd um, as they come to the surface while I start to stir it. There's no healing time for the curds. Um, the amount of time we had for ripening and renneting certainly allowed those curds to have a very firm structure um, as well as the addition of the calcium chloride which adds back soluble calcium that the uh, the rennet can act upon. So we're going to heat this up now and we're going to start stirring for quite a long time. We're just checking the temperature first. Some issues with my thermi pen there. <laughs> anyway, there we go. She's on. So over the course of the ripening and the renneting, it has cooled down by two degrees, uh, which is okay. That's no hassle. Um, we have to heat it up now anyway uh, to shrink the curds even further. So I'm going to start stirring and over the course of an hour we're going to slowly heat it up to 51 Celsius which is 124 Fahrenheit. So that's over the period of one hour and you do have to stir continuously. You have big muscles after this one. So sit back, play some music and uh, enjoy the stirring or um, break out a glass of wine if you so desire. Certainly helps with the stirring process. Okay, this is at the 31-ish minute mark. You can see that a lot more whey has been expelled and that the curds 
are a lot smaller. We'll just uh, should see that in a second. There we go. So they've shrunk considerably from the lentil size pieces that they were originally. So an hour later, we're at uh, nearly 51. Um, that was close enough as far as I was concerned. I didn't really want to go over temperature. And you'll see that the curd size now is about the size of a rice grain. It has sh shrunk considerably. Now it's going to do a quick test to make sure it's ready for pressing. So you clump a handful of curds together. If they form a ball and then you can just press them apart with your thumb, then they're ready to press. A great little test before you do start pressing. Okay, so that's all the stirring, all the heating we need to do. The heat is now off and we're going to put the lid back on and we're going to allow the curds to... All right, final temp temperature check. Okay, close enough to 51 for my liking. Okay, we're going to allow the curds now to sink to the bottom and settle for five minutes. So take your big pot over to the sink area and we're going to drain that through a cheesecloth lined basket. Now the basket I'm using is the largest one I have, which is uh, 165 millimetres across, and it, which is the same as 6.5 inches. So just pour that through. That also uh, does two purposes. It heats up the basket, uh, just warms it a bit so cold curds don't hit it. Now I've also sprayed the uh, cheesecloth with a very fine mist of white vinegar. Now this helps avoid the parmesan from sticking to the cheesecloth because it's very hot at this stage. It's still, you know, 51 odd degrees Celsius, which is quite high. Uh, it has a tendency to stick to the cheesecloth when you press it. So a little spritz of vinegar, white vinegar, helps um, it come away cleanly. Just adjusts the pH level and uh, you don't have any stickiness. So there's a tip. Okay, so now I'm just pressing that down so it all fills the mould um, evenly. And then I'm going to fold the cheesecloth over the top of the basket squeezing a bit of the way out there and then we're going to top with the follower never put the follower directly onto the cheese because that may stick to the follower as well this gives it a nice even surface see i'm pulling out the cheesecloth a little bit there to make sure that there's no folds popping it into the cheese press now and we're going to press this at about a medium pressure uh, just initially to make it form into the uh, the shape that we're after so just make sure when you're pressing that the way runs clear if you oh, and not cloudy so initial pressing is uh, 11 kilograms or 24 pounds for 30 minutes and just on that way if it is cloudy when it's coming out then you're over pressing it because it's releasing too much of the proteins that you need in the cheese for the flavor to develop so make sure it's fairly clear as you press it so 30 minutes later we're going to take it out of the press now just lifting the follower out there and just releasing it from the mold now very gently we're going to be pulling the cheesecloth away so this is still quite warm in the mold so I'm releasing it carefully it did stick just a little bit just there you can see that the uh, the cheese a little bit of the surface of the cheese pulled away so all good, all the rest of it came off okay, that little spritz of vinegar helped. So we're just carefully pulling away the bottom, no tears there at all, which is really good. So we're just going to flip that over now. And just uh, redress it and repress it at uh, 22 kilograms or 50 pounds for 12 hours. 
and this is to help uh, consolidate the curds, make sure they're evenly pressed all the way through, and then you will have no mechanical holes in your cheese when it's finished. So I'm using a 50 pound spring, so when it's all closed up, I know I'm at the, the right weight or the right pressing weight. Now, because I am using a spring, I did have to go and check and uh, reclose it up again as the cheese uh, began to knit together or the curds began to knit together. Okay, the next day for me, now we get to brine the cheese. So I'm using an 18% saturated brine there. I'm going to remove the cheese from the cheesecloth and press. Sorry, remove the cheese from the press and the cheesecloth. So you don't have to be as careful as before. You will find that the cloth doesn't stick as much. In fact, it didn't stick at all in this instance for me. And it is a very heavy cheese. It is a very compact. So there was no ridges or anything like that. So it felt really good. So we're going to pop it into the brine now for 18 hours and we're going to turn at the halfway mark at nine hours now my brine bucket there was um, rather full you don't have to brine in one of these containers you can use a stainless steel pot and pop it in there just make sure that if it keeps floating to the top just sprinkle a surface of uh, cheese salt over the top um, of the of the cheese that's floating and then when you flip it over do the same thing again Okay, so it sits there in the brine. At, uh, I put it back in the cheese cave, so it was at 13 degrees Celsius. Okay, so once it's uh, finished brining, I'm going to take it out of the, of the brining tub and put it on just to a, a draining mat and a board, and that's going to air dry now at room temperature for two to three days or until touch dry. Now, it did take two days for mine to air dry, until I was happy it was uh, air dry. There you go, a nice looking cheese, very compact, as all good parmesans should be. So just to keep the beasties off it, I've got this lovely little umbrella thing that I pop over the top, so uh, nothing can uh, get onto my cheese. Certainly don't want a uh, Kasu Mazu. Alrighty, so once it's touch dry, I'm basically going to mature this for 6 to 12 months at 10 to 12 degrees Celsius uh, and uh, we're going to turn that weekly. Now that's at uh, 80 to, sorry, 85 to 90 percent relative humidity. So in the first week, turn daily. So as you can see, fairly easy process. It's the stirring for an hour that gets your arm. I'll tell you what, I've got some muscles now. But uh, we're going to put this into a ripening box and we're going to mature it for between 6 to 12 months. Uh, cheese is small, probably 6 months the flavour will be there. Um, I have matured Parmesan up to 18 months and it has turned out amazing. A little bit dry though. Uh, we're going to try and uh, ripen it naturally, so a natural rind for at least the first 3 months, keeping it nice and clean. Uh, and then I may have to vacuum pack it to keep the moisture in. It's fairly small cheese. Unlike the Parmesans that are uh, made in Italy, which are about 60 to 70 kilograms, uh, which is very heavy. We're going to keep it at a temperature of between 10 and 12 degrees Celsius. Uh, and we're going to do that um, at between 85 and 90 percent humidity in the ripening box for those three months. After that, backpacking doesn't matter what the humidity of your cheese fridge will be. At a pinch, you could wax it. However, I find when you wax cheeses for a long time, uh, they tend to get a mold growth under them. Um, so that's why I'm going to prefer to backpack it once it's got a natural rind. Anyway, don't forget that you can buy the kit for this. We have an Italian cheese kit um, and you can buy that in our store. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see new and interesting cheese content and that you can support us also via Patreon. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we'll see you next time.